chapter 26, W. At, four, at first, Morgan thought she had gone bl blind. I said, slowly, said Jupiter. She felt him release her shoulders, heard him take a step backward, open your eyes slowly. She knew she was in the Deucalion, knew she was standing in Jupiter's office, but it could have been the surface of the sun. The world had washed out. Everything was a brilliant sun, bleached white, dazzling and bright. She squinted. She could just make out her silhouette in the mirror. Was this really what she saw every time he looked at her? Don't look too long, Jupiter warned. The brightness didn't come from one big light. It came from thousands and thousands, maybe millions, maybe billions of tiny pinpricks of the same golden white light she'd seen at Crow Manor. They gathered around her like microscopic particles of dust catching the light in their beam. No, not like dust, something living, moths gathering to a flame. Is that? Wonder. Nice, isn't it? Nice was not the right word. It was beautiful, but it was not nice. There was something about it that was the opposite of nice. It made Morgan feel some combination of awe and expectation and panic and joy and something large and very small and screaming and whispering and something else. What's it doing? Morgan asked. Waiting. For what? For you. Waiting for me to do what? Jupiter was quiet for a long moment and then, I guess, we'll see. He took her shoulders and pressed his forehead to hers a second time, just as she had done to the elders, just as he'd done to the elders at the show trial. Morgan hadn't realized at the time what was happening, that he was able to share the gift of his sight with other people, to show them how he saw the world, if only fleetingly. To Morgan's great disappointment and relief, the world went dull again. A girl in the mirror, black-haired, dark-eyed, crooked nose, looked normal, ordinary. He said I'm like him. It was the first time she voiced her fear out loud. It's true, isn't it? That's what this gathering is. It's this wonder gathering around me. It means I'm a, a wondersmith, she swallowed. She could almost taste the word in her mouth. Yes, Jupiter said gravely, but try to understand. The word wondersmith doesn't always mean something bad or something evil, Mog. It didn't. Heavens no, there was a time in Nevermore long, long ago when to be a wondersmith was a celebrated honor. Like being in the Wondrous Society, even greater than that. Wondersmiths were wish granters and protectors. They used their power to bring good things to the world. Wondersmith doesn't mean monster or murderer. Squall made it made mean those things. He did something unforgivable. He betrayed his people and his city, abused his power. He made wondersmith a dark and terrible word, but it wasn't always. You can change its meaning again, Mog, he beamed at her. And you will. I know you will. I meant it when I said you don't have a knack. What you have is so much more than that. You have a gift, a calling, and you get to decide what that means. No one else. As Morgan's sight adjusted, Jupiter's study slowly swam back into focus. The photographs on the walls, the books on the shelves, Jupiter's face all shining blue eyes and bright copper tangle of a beard. Morgan dropped into a leather armchair, crossing her ankles on the footrest. You knew all along what I was, didn't you? Jupiter nodded. And Squall? You knew he bit on me too? Yes. Morgan sighed. All that time she would have wasted, worrying whether she could tell Jupiter about Squall. She felt stupid. So why did you make me go through the trial? She asked. Why didn't you just tell the elders? You're supposing that being a wondersmith is the most important thing about you, isn't it? Not at all. If it were the most important thing, Mog, wouldn't we hold the show trial first? Think about it. We had the book trial to see who was honest and quick thinking. The chase trial to see who is tenacious and strategic. The fright trial to see who is brave and resourceful. Didn't you think there might have been some fascinating knacks that we lost in those first three trials? Of course there were. Who knows, maybe the most talented people of all were weeded out before the show trial even arrived. The point is, as far as the society is concerned, if you are not honest and determined and brave, then it doesn't matter how talented you are. You had to go through all four trials because I needed the elders to know what sort of person you are in hope. He paused, swallowing, and then quietly finished. 
in the hope they'll continue to see you as a person first and a wondersmith second. You told me the wondersmith was a fairy tale and a superstition. Jupiter nodded. I know, I'm sorry I lied, although it's sort of true. Wondersmith's history is so bound up in myth and nonsense. For most people, it's hard to tell the difference. It was only half a lie, but still, I'm sorry. Why'd you lie? Because I thought it was the right thing to do. I didn't want you thinking too much about the Wondersmith. Just one more thing to worry about, isn't it? Thought it was best to get you into the society first and deal with it later. And the others? What others? Three others registered. You were talking about the Cursed Children's Register, weren't you? Are there under other Wondersmiths too? No. She waited for Jupiter to say more, but th he was a closed book. What happened to them? She prompted. Did you save them too, or? He relented a little. They're fine. They're far away, safe and sound, blissfully unaware of Ezra Squall and his hunt of smoke and shadow. Lucky them, Morgan thought. The last two days since her encounter with Squall had to be utterly draining. The train had returned Morgan to the Gossamer Line platform just as Fenn and Jack and Hawthorne had arrived, breathless and panicked having figured out where she disappeared to and run to fetch Jupiter. Jack reached her first, white-faced and speechless with relief. Jupiter swept her up in a tight squeeze that nearly choked her, and Fen licked her hair until it would practically stand up on its own. Hawthorne begged her to tell the whole story again at least 12 times, gasping and cheering at all the right moments with each retelling. The tale of Morrigan's close call with the hunt of smoke and shadow went around the Deucalion, but Jupiter made Fen, Jack, Morrigan, and Hawthorne swear to keep the Wondersmith bit a secret. Jack had responded indignantly, I already promised, didn't I? That hadn't made any sense to Morrigan until just now. She suddenly remembered the night before Christmas, when Jack had stared at her in horror and wonder. Jack knew, didn't he? She said, Real realization dawning. He's known since Christmas because he's like you. He's a... He's a, what do you call it? A witness, said Jupiter, taking the chair opposite. Yes, he hates it. Why would he hate it? Morgan asked, astounded. It would be like knowing everything. I thought that was Jack's favorite thing. Jupiter chuckled at that. His face grew thoughtful as he looked at her. It's a bit like that sometimes, I suppose, but not always. Sometimes even the gossamer can hide things. I'd love to be a witness. I'm not sure you would, said Jupiter, wincing. Seeing all those hidden things all the time, every time somebody lies, it's there on their face, like a black smudge. Every time somebody's miserable, it hangs around them like flies on a corpse. Pain, anger, betrayal, it's all there everywhere, all around us, all the time. Most witnesses can't even live in a place like this. It would drive them to insanity. You mean a place like the Deucalion? I mean, nevermore, or any place where millions of people converge every day, leaving invisible trails that crisscross each other in a million, billion, trillion threads of a mad tapestry. People leave pieces of themselves everywhere, Morgan. All the fights they've had, all the hurts they've suffered, the love and joy they felt, the good things and the bad things they've done. He rubbed his face tiredly. I've learned to filter it, to only see the things that are important. I can pull apart the different layers and threads to make sense of the madness. But that took me years, Mog. Years and years of training. Jack isn't there yet. He won't be for some time. For now, the patch acts like a filter. It disrupts his sight so he only sees what you or anyone else would see. Otherwise, he'd go mad. That hadn't occurred to Morgan that having a talent like Jupiter's might be a, have a downside. Perhaps that's why Jack was so bad-tempered. Why didn't he just say so? She asked. Jupiter looked down at his hands and shrugged. I think he's embarrassed. People tend not to like witnesses. It's hard to be friends with someone who can see your secrets. But that's ridiculous, said Morgan, thinking of Jupiter's many friends and admirers. Everyone in the whole world likes you. Jupiter laughed loudly, joyfully, until there were tears in his eyes. Your view of the whole world is radically out of kilter, Morgan Crow, and that's one of the many things I like about you. That reminds me. Something arrived for you today. He stood up and beckoned Morgan to follow. Unlocking his desk drawer, Jupiter took out a small wooden black box and gave it to her. I'm not supposed to give this to you until your inauguration day. But it's been a rubbish week, and I think in light of that, you probably deserve to open it now. Inside the box, 
on a red velvet cushion rested a small golden pin in the shape of a W. Morgan gasped. My pin. Does this mean, did he get it? The last signature for that safeguard thing? Jupiter's face fell a little. Not quite, no, but I'll sort that out later, I promise. He fastened the pin to her collar. There you are. Your ticket to a reserved seat on the Wonderground. Hope it was worth it. Morrigan laughed. It seemed insane to have gone through everything she had this year, cheating death, competing with the trials, facing Flitok and Squall in the hunt of smoke and shadow, and every other wretched thing she'd faced just for a tiny pin. But it wasn't tiny. It was big, a very big promise. The promise of a family and belonging and friendship. The funny thing was, Morgan thought, reflecting on the past week and her life at the Hotel Ducalion, it turned out she had all those things already. The chandelier had settled in its permanent form at last. Frank won the betting pool, and at least, at least he was the closest. It wasn't a peacock, but it was a bird, a large black bird, shining iridescent from certain angles, its wingspan spread over the lobby as if protecting the Hotel Ducalion and its inhabitants, or perhaps poised to swoop down on their heads. It depended whom you asked. Jupiter said he loved it even more than the pink sailing ship. A few days later, Jupiter and Nan took their candidates for a belated celebration. They had lamb shanks and ginger beer, in a cozy pub on Courage Square, toasting Morrigan's and Hawthorne's successes. The patrons spent hours telling them thrilling tales of their own first years as scholars in the Wondrous Society. Most of Nan's stories involved dragon riding, and most of Jupiter's involved such outrageous rule breaking that he finally had to change the subject when he saw Hawthorne taking notes. On the way home, Morgan kicked for lurries of snow up from the ground as she walked. Despite the bitter cold, she thought, Nevermore had taken an extraordinary shine on this otherwise ordinary midwinter's day. She felt different. Everything felt different. People in the street smiled at them as they passed. Morrigan was no longer the cursed crow girl, waiting for the next terrible thing to happen, waiting to take the blame. And yet there was something dark, something dreadful, lurking still in the back of her mind. Jupiter nudged her as they reached the Brawley Rail platform. What are you thinking about? He'll be back, won't he? She said quietly. Squall, he'll come back with his monsters. Jupiter's face was grim. I imagine he'll try. Morgan nodded. She clutched her umbrella tight, touching her, her fingertips absently to the little opal bird on the top. Then we'll just have to be ready. A nearby group of children whispered to each other and craned their necks to watch as Morgan and Jupiter reached out confidently with their hooked umbrella handles and were swept away by the passing brawling rail. They weren't just looking at Jupiter, but at the pair of them with their golden W pins gleaming proudly on their coats. Patron and candidate, the mad ginger and the strange little girl with black eyes. The end. I cannot believe you guys listened to this entire book. It is, it was 461 pages. This is probably the longest book you have read as a fourth grader. I am super, super impressed in all of you. And I would like to wish you a happy summer. Um, please feel free to keep in touch with me on email or wherever. Um, I would be curious to hear what you were reading this summer and what you think about it. And I look forward to seeing you in the halls at school next year. Have a great summer, you guys. Bye.